morning, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. I want to thank everybody for joining us for today's presentation on iLink eForms. My name is Kim Torres, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator here at ImageSource. I'm very happy to introduce Randy Weekly as our speaker today. Randy is the Vice President of Software Development at ImageSource, and his responsibilities include the development and delivery of our iLink product suite. He has spent the last 25 years working in research, system architecture, and technical leadership positions, and has a wealth of knowledge in the ECM field. His experience covers a variety of technologies and industries, from space shuttle guidance, navigation, and control analysis at NASA, to GIS and satellite imagery at GTE, as well as video conferencing and design at MCI. We'll be taking your questions today using the chat function on the right-hand side of your screen, and Randy will be answering those questions after the demo portion of the presentation. You can also contact us by using any of our social media outlets, such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and of course our Image Source website. Um, our Twitter handles and Facebook page can be found on our Image Source website. With that said, I will hand things over to you, Randy, to get started. Great. Thank you, Kim. And thanks, everybody, for taking time out of your day to share with us and let us give you some information about Image Source's electronic forms product called iLinks eForms. So today we're going to go through five key aspects of iLinks eForms. We're going to talk about why an electronic form solution might be important to you and how and what kinds of benefits it could deliver. We're going to talk about BYOD or bring your own device and how important it is becoming for enterprises to be able to embrace um, different types of platforms being brought into the business and it, it, through software and uh, through processes. We'll talk about how eForms can be used to ensure accurate data and eliminate the garbage in, garbage out problems. We're going to talk about how eForms can help deliver this better data faster to support real-time decision-making processes. And then before we go into the demo, I'm going to go through the key elements of the eForms product. So as we, as we demo through that, you'll get a little bit better uh, idea of how they kind of hang together and how the information flows through the eForms system. And then we'll wrap up with, uh, with the Q&A. So let's first talk about some of the paper issues that most of us are facing today and how iLinks eForms can solve these problems and at the same time deliver efficiencies into your business. So one of the biggest paper challenges uh, when it comes to paper forms uh, is the rekeying of information. So if I've got paper forms coming into my organization, I've got to get that information extracted from the paper and put into a back office or line of business system. And so this is a very time-consuming process. So electronic forms, a uh, solution like eForms, allows you to collect that information and deliver it electronically to your back office and line of business systems. The next uh, problem is the data quality. And especially when I'm rekeying, you're guaranteed there are going to be errors in that process as that information uh, is, is taken by a human and put into uh, a line of business interface. And so one of the benefits of eForms is it provides creation time validation. And by that, I mean the ability to ensure that the data that's, that's being input into the electronic form is complete and correct. Now, you could use a, a Forms OCR solution or Intelligent OCR solution. Uh, those are great technologies. Uh, but you're never going to get 100% accuracy extracting that information. And even if you approach 100%, you're doing it after the fact. So if, if the data is, has been input incorrectly or there's missing information, it's very costly and time-consuming to go back to the source to recollect that. Now, one of the, the most obvious ones uh, in terms of paper problems is the cost. The cost of the paper, the printing, the scanning, uh, and the storage of the completed paper forms. And this one just goes away with iLinks eForms. But one of the, one of the possibly overlooked uh, benefits of going to electronic forms would be that uh, all of this paper manipulation, this printing and the scanning and the storage, uh, it's, it's not only costly, but it's, it's dull work. And so why not engage employees in higher value activities like seeing more patients or handling more claims or better serving your constituents? 
With iLinks eForms, uh, you have faster access to data. And this allows you to be able to make better decisions more quickly with access to this near real-time information. So for instance, an adjuster could be out at, a, out at a customer site. They could be filling out an eForms electronic form, snapping some pictures of a damaged car, damaged property and submit that information back to the office before they even leave the client's driveway. And that information can be, the process of, of dealing with that information, consuming that and getting that into the back office systems can begin immediately, as opposed to the adjuster having to wait until the next morning when he gets back into the office and having to key that information off the paper forms into those systems. With eForms, you can manage and monitor your data input processes much more efficient and it has some, some slick built-in reporting and analysis tools to help you do that. And of course, if you're eliminating the paper, you're eliminating or reducing your carbon footprint, and it's a much more green uh, way, to, way to conduct a business. Now, some of the technology solutions that you're, you're probably using or heard of deliver value over a longer period of time, and that's not really the case with eForms. With uh, iLinks eForms, you're going to see some measurable benefits uh, realized immediately. And as you're using eForms, you're really recreating uh, your exact paper forms. So your, your workers aren't using an entirely new paradigm. Uh, they're filling out the exact same forms they filled out yesterday, except now they're on a tablet or a laptop or a or, a, or possibly even a phone. So there's, there's no, uh, no real learning curve or training curve to slow down this conversion from paper into an electronic form. So let's take a look at a, a customer story here. Uh, Stanislaw County Court Systems has selected ILINC C forms to help them move towards a completely paperless court system. So currently when the trial's been completed, the court clerk has to uh, collect the wit witness testimonies, uh, trial results, court orders, fines, settlements, uh, all of this, art all of the artifacts from the proceedings. And today this is done on paper, which is then shuffled around the courtroom uh, to be reviewed and signed off by the lawyers, plaintiffs, defendants, uh, and then ultimately delivered to the judge for his or her final review and signatures uh, before that entire bundle is, is filed. With the implementation of iLinks eForms, this entire process will now be handled electronically. So the court clerks will use eForms to record these transactions and artifacts. They'll use tablets to capture signatures. And ultimately, all of this information is routed to the bench uh, where the judge will finalize this process and all of this electronic information is submitted automatically to the repository. Image Source is going to design the first three of eight forms that will be used, and then we'll train the Stanislaw County IT team to build out the remaining five forms on their own. This project, pro project is expected to launch next month, and it's just one of several projects that this forward-thinking court system has planned for iLinks eForms. Another use case here, is in this case, we've got a major medical center in California uh, they have streamlined the data acquisition and delivery processes within their clinical data processing organization using iLinks eForms. And by doing this, they've been able to reduce collection time and costs while at the same time improving their overall data quality. And this allows them to deliver better results more quickly than they could in the past with paper forms. All right, let's talk about this, the BYOD or bring your own device uh, situation that's been building the last few years as enterprises uh, really look towards technology that can work across a broad array of devices. The eForms client works on virtually every popular computing device today. And this includes Apple iOS, uh, iPads and iPhones, Google Android, smartphones, tablets and slates, and virtually all of the Windows uh, devices such as tablets, desktops, laptops, and surfaces. And with eForms, you can get you get the data validation that we mentioned earlier available on all of these supported platforms. And the eForms also provide touch-friendly uh, characteristics uh, to support some of the smaller form factor devices uh, like Android or iPhone. And in many cases, you can use the devices. Uh, built-in camera to snap pictures directly into a form and then even add markups on top of that photo. 
And e-forms can be filled out offline or online. But if you're offline, uh, you, you can fill out the form, and then when you connect back to your network, then submit the form. iLinks eForms also has some advanced input capabilities, such as handwriting to text, uh, ICR, uh, and we'll demo all of these features. Um, and you can do this using your stylus or using your finger. It can also do speech to text, which allows you to do hands-free data input into a form. You can capture digital signatures in a form. You can attach files from the desktop. Uh, or as I mentioned, you could snap a photo uh, using the device's built-in camera or web camera uh, and apply markups or annotations on top of those photos. iLinks eForms has some adva advanced form input components, such as rich, uh, rich text and regular text input fields, radio buttons, check boxes, drop lists, I mentioned you can do photos with annotations. You can also do GPS location data, barcodes, RFID, and even apply voice memos into a form. With eForms, you can fill out the form offline uh, or online. Now, if you've leveraged a back-end database to do some lookups, and we'll demo this uh, in just a few minutes, um, whether you're going through ODBC or OLADB or you're using uh, web services to access that information, um, of course you're going to need to be connected to the network to, to leverage that data. But one of the, one of the neat things about eForms is that if you've got a small data set, and maybe this is a list of 30 or 50 or 100 office locations around the world, you can embed that information as a database into the eForm itself. And this allows people who are offline to be able to access that information, pull it up, and use it to pre-populate form fields. So, of course, this is going to save time. Um, and uh, as well, if you're filling out a form, you can stop at any time. So I can save my progress. I can come back to that form later. And then, of course, once I've finished, if I'm offline, I can wait until I'm reconnected, and then I can submit that. If I'm connected to the network, I just submit it anytime. All right, let's talk about now capturing information within a business process or transactional type of solution, but, but more importantly, capturing the information correctly. So my teenagers have no problem sending dozens of wordy text messages a day on the iPhone. Now, I, I find it rather hard with my big fingers to, to type on, those, on my iPhone. But with iLinks eForms, you can use either the built-in device or keyboard, or you can leverage ICR, Intelligent Character Recognition, or Handwriting Recognition. And you can write with your stylus or even, a, even your finger. And you can build this into the form to collect signatures. You can create diagrams. Uh, you can annotate or mark up photos. Uh, or you can just collect freeform notes within a form. Now, if you've ever tried to access a full website from your phone, you know that it, it can be challenging to click on the right link because everything's squished together and compressed. With iLinks eForms, you can design forms that are finger friendly. And using components like checkboxes and toggles and date pickers, um, you're, you can create a form that has the ability to collect information easily on those small form devices and accurately. Now we talked about database lookups, and this is a really powerful feature of the eForms. Um, this allows you to tie information from a back office, line of business database system into your form. And th this is going to provide a number of values. Uh, primarily, it's going to ensure data accuracy. So if I'm pulling information from my single source of truth, whether that's a financial system or CRM system or um, you know, a, cl a client system, uh, that information is coming directly from that, from that uh, source of record, and I can use it to populate my form. Now, if I'm populating a bunch of fields automatically, of course, that's going to speed up the form completion. Um, another cool thing is if, if the person who's filling out that information either uh, corrects the information or applies additional information, you can capture that and push that back into the back-end system if you like. Now, with eForms, one of the, another powerful feature is the ability to create business rules. 
and and it's it's very easy to do this, and I'll I'll demonstrate this in just a few minutes. Um, this allows you to enforce the the quality of that data that we mentioned. You can avoid uh, missing data by using required fields, required signature fields. You can flag potential errors, and you can prevent the submission of bad data. Um, and and this is going to really decrease this. Uh, after the fact process of having to come back and correct that information or collect additional information from from your source, uh, whoever filled out that form. Now you can you can use some of the point and click uh, features, and I'll I'll demonstrate those. Or you can drop into the eForm scripting functionality, and in this environment you can create literally any level of sophistication you need uh, in order to perform uh, your validation or business logic. Back in 2011, the Cadence Group did a survey, and they collected uh, over 14,000 federal, state, and industry laws, standards, and regulations that deal with paper and electronic records processing. So the chances are good that we could all benefit from some enhanced compliance when it comes to uh, onboarding information such as uh, would come in through a paper form or an electronic form. And with eForms, you can streamline this process while at the same time providing complete audit trails and timeline tracking for this data. With iLinks eForms, you can create solutions that are FDA compliant, uh, HL7 and HIPAA compliant. And with eForms, your information, uh, if you choose, can be encrypted both in terms of data storage uh, and the form data transmission. All right, let's talk about how eForms can leverage uh, line of business uh, back office systems to support real-time decision making and process analysis. So eForms is integrated with a with a very large number of back end systems that include uh, Oracle and SAP, uh, FileNet, uh, both iLinks Capture and iLinks Content Store, SharePoint, Salesforce, uh, and many more. And this allows you access to real-time information for your input validation and lookups. And of course, th that would be impossible with a paper form. Um, additionally, the submitted form data can be delivered immediately back to these systems, so there's no lag uh, waiting for the paper form data to be, you know, rekeyed into these back-end systems. Now, collecting and, the, and processing of form data is the heart of iLinks eForms, but Understanding the flow of data through this system can also provide some valuable insights into your business processes as well. So these, these would include things like customer usage patterns, um, utilization tracking, so if you're using eForms in a shared service center, uh, you, could, you can easily understand who's using what and, and do chargebacks. Um, you can identify bottlenecks in this data collection flow. Like, you know, who's the procrastinator in the flow that has 50 approvals sitting on their desk? As well, you can identify some macro-level business trends. And these, these may be things that even your back-end line of business system isn't, isn't able to pick up on or, or isn't able to pick up on yet. Okay, before we jump into the demo, I want to go through some of the, all of the components, actually, of iLinks eForm so that you've got an idea of how these each of these components play together. So, so the demo will make a little more sense, I think. Within iLake's eForms, there are three modules. And it's, it starts with the eForms designer on the left. This is a WYSIWYG point-and-click application that allows you to create you know, really any type of business form you want. In the middle there, number two, this is the eForms client. And this controls the display of the form, input validation rules, execution, uh, and the submission uh, to onboard uh, this information into your, into your environment. And then lastly, we've got the eForm server. And this is the, the engine uh, that, that collects and processes and ultimately delivers the form information uh, to you know, any number of destinations or back-end systems. This is kind of a busy form, but it, it kind of shows how the data flows. So if we start over on the on the left hand side, we've got the the iLinks eForms designer. So here's where you create your forms and define your business logic. And when you're done, you publish this form up to the eForms server, which is kind of in the center of the slide. 
it's the eForm server's responsibility to manage access to the forms and make those available to the clients. And so there's some, some robust security in the form server that allows you to define groups of customers, internal or external. You can apply different security. Um, you can have sub-administrators within those groups to allow them to manage their own specific set of forms. It's also the eForm server that would track the workflow aspects if you've built some workflow into your form. So maybe I collect information uh, through a form initially and that gets routed for some type of approval or there's additional information that has to be added to a section of the form or a page in the form and then routed to another person and another person. It's the form server that controls uh, all of that routing. And then ultimately when the, uh, the information has been completely uh, filled in and validated, um, this information then is, is output. And this can be uh, to XML or CVS or PDF, um, a number of different formats uh, to be picked up by possibly another content management system um, or, or into a workflow system uh, or some type of archival. Okay, let's jump into a demonstration now. And I'm going to first bring up the eForms client. Now, what I would really like to do is demo this on a tablet for you because it's, it's, a, it's a really elegant way to input data. But I've got the next best thing. I've got a, just a bamboo signature pad sitting here next to my computer. So I'll do my best. It's a little, little strange because I have to write with one hand and then watch what I'm writing uh, you know, separately. So uh, first I go to, a, to uh, my open my forms. And if I, I'm actually not connected to a server, all this is local uh, for this demo. Uh, but if I were connected to a server, what I would see is a list of the form templates that I have access to based on my login and based on my group. Um, now when I brought this up, the local sessions was selected here. And I'll talk about this. This, when I mentioned in the PowerPoint that you could fill out a form and you could stop and save your progress and then come back and pick it up later, all of these local sessions represent partially filled out forms that I've done in preparation for our talk today. And you can see that some of these forms are highlighted in red. And I've got a couple here, this one and, and these two lower ones that are, are highlighted in green, which means that they are ready to submit. All of the validation and requirements have been met. The red ones still have things to do, and they can't be submitted yet. And I'll show that in just a minute. So we'll go back to the available templates. And I'm going to select this financial account opening form. I'm going to switch over to my signature pad here. Um, so when I, when I come in here, I've got a, I've got a couple of, of, uh, of options that I can perform. Uh, and, and a couple of ways that I can interact with the system. So I can select a mouse, um, which is, is what I'm using right now. I can select this pen. I've got some color options. Uh, and, then I, and then I've also got uh, an eraser. And I'll, I'll show you how these things work. So let's, let's go with a black pen. Um, and I'm going to go up here. I'm going to say this is a, this is a new application. Um, and this is going to be a, a cash account. Um, and it's an individual one. Now, I, I'm, already, I'm already a member of this financial uh, institution, so it, it just so happens that they're going to have my account information on file. So if I go up here, and I'm using the keyboard at this point, and I'm going to start typing my account number in here. And once I enter that account number, it, it goes back to a back-end database and pulls my information. And it's pre-populated uh, a number of fields here for me automatically, so that's that's great. So I don't have to I don't have to fill those in. So I'll switch back over to my my pen, and I can continue filling out this form. If I can find my cursor, um, marking a couple of these things and reviewing information. Um, now I noticed that the um, my uh, my birthday is wrong. So I actually wasn't born in in. Whoops, sorry about that. Was born in 1972. Oh, sorry, my pen keeps hitting the. Uh... Well, 
was born in 1972, unfortunately, so I can correct this information with my pen and change it to my actual real birth date. Um, I could come up here and I, and I can fill in any of this, this form information. Um, my middle name is actually Scott. Now, if I if I write kind of sloppy, which I do sometimes, uh, and it can't it can't recognize what I've written. Well, let me write sloppy. Ah, okay, how's this? Um, it's going to give me some options here. Once it can't recognize something I've written. <laughs> okay, let's try this one. Uh, items in red are ones that it has a low confidence for, so I can select this, and then I get a drop down. And these are its best guess on what I was actually trying to write. So I can go down here and just select one off the list, and and, and do do my correction that way. Okay, now I don't I don't uh, my camera's closed up on my laptop on my docking station, but I can come in here and select a. Uh, Go up to my desktop, and I can select a photo. There's me. Uh, I could have, if I, if I had my camera uh, set up and working, I could have just snapped a, a photo of me right uh, right from my laptop's camera. And I'll mark I'll mark this, and go down here to the signature and my sloppy signature. Now, you'll notice on this form there is a thin red line at the top and a thin red line at the bottom. Now I can I can go down here and hover over this little pop-up menu, and you'll see the little little red dot over there on the right, and that indicates that I haven't met the minimum requirements for this form yet. So there's still stuff that I need to do. Um, I can also access any of the pages of this form. So in in this particular form, there are four pages. There's a personal information, contact, financial, and a final signature page. Now, I just happen to know that I can cheat, and I can go to this signature page, even though I'm not really done with the form, uh, and, and I can I can just go ahead and sign this uh, this client signature here. Now you'll notice that the lines on the top and the lines on the bottom have turned green. If I go down here and pop up this thing, uh, the the little orb there has turned green, and this indicates that I have uh, satisfied all of the requirements of this particular form. Now let's let's say I'm I'm not happy with uh, the way that uh, the way that looks. I'm going to come down here and select the eraser tool and uh, just erase that. Go back. Let's pick a red pen because that's neat. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so I've got everything done the way I want to do it, um, and I'm ready to um, I'm ready to submit. So to do that, I go down to this little pop-up menu, and I finish the form. Okay. Now, in a real environment, I would have collected that form information and submitted it back to the server, where it could have gone through a workflow process, involved other people to check my work or check my data or augment the data, attach more forms, um, any number of things. And ultimately, it would have been output probably somewhere on the server to be picked up by a content management system or workflow system or, or what have you for further processing. But this form is actually configured just to put some information on my desktop. So I've got a, I've got a, uh, oops, I've got a sample output form folder, and it put the information out here f for me. So, oops, popped up on my other system. So what this form is configured to do is output a number of things. This is a TIFF, and this is going to this is going to have all the information that I've provided. Uh, uh, anything that's attached um, will be provided, and, and I can output that as well. If I had done a voice memo, of course, that's not going to go into a TIFF, but that would have been output as a separate file for me. Um, I output a JPEG file. I apologize. This is going to my other screen. I also output some XML. So all of the information that I filled out in that form has been output for me in an XML file. You can see the gibberish that I typed typed in there. As well, I decided to output a standard, um, we call it an index file. This includes a header with all of the field names that I've selected to be output, and I can control that and the values that were actually submitted. So this allows me to output 
a number of things. These are just a few samples. As I mentioned, we could have done a PDF file. We could have output a, a WAV file that included a voice memo. Um, I could gener generate barcode information from that form submittal as well. So it's a, it's a really powerful environment to collect information uh, from the form, in addition to just standard uh, text fields. All right, let's switch over to the designer piece now. Just let me quickly highlight some key elements of the, this interface. On the left-hand side is my, my palette of tools that I have. And these are, these are things that I can drag and drop onto my form as I'm creating this form. In this panel here, this one to the left, that's kind of a navigation panel. So I can, in, in this case, there are four, uh, four pages to this form, and I can click through and see those. And if I expand this, what I see is each one of the form fields. And as I, I click through here, you'll, you'll notice on the right-hand side in this, uh, the canvas where I design my form, uh, those fields are highlighted. And if I double-click, um, other screen again, uh, it pulls up the, the properties for that particular field. And, and they're different depending on what, what the field is. Um, so you'll, you'll see I have uh, buttons. I've got some rich text fields I can add. Uh, I can add pictures to the form, whether they're just uh, graphics for my form or the ability to collect a photo uh, from the, the user who's inputting it. Text fields, uh, check boxes, um, free form text. Um, in this case, uh, this text field is automatically converted into text for me. So to get that cool handwriting recognition, uh, there's nothing I have to do. Um, it's very easy to add these fields, and I'm just going to go drop one here on this last page. So I, I just click the click the field I want, draw it roughly on here, and it pops up this properties uh, for this text field. And one of the one of the really neat things is, let's say I want to capture a phone number, I can put in a mask for this. I'll just put in the standard standard phone book mask. And it puts this field for me. Now, I, didn't, I don't have to do anything here. The masking is already guaranteed, and all of the handwriting recognition is built in. So when I run this form, um, the user can, who's filling this out can uh, type information from their keyboard or capture it using a stylus or their finger, uh, kind of like what we did in the, in the demo. Now, let's talk about validation quickly. Um, I can go into this form validation rules. And let me just show you a couple of, of easy ones. And I demoed this when we were, when we were looking at the client piece of uh, the iLinx eForms product. And there were two signatures that were required. And this is a very simple rule. Uh, editor here, I drop this list down. I see all of the fields that are in my form. Um, and of course, I've, I've, they've selected the signature field here. And then I've got some options to, to do this validation. Um, I can copy the information out uh, into a field. I can just specify that it, it simply cannot be empty. Uh, I can compare it to other fields. It must contain certain information. Um, and so a lot of, lot of different built-in capabilities of, of performing the validation. Uh, one other thing that's really interesting, if you go beyond just the simple kind of required fields, if you see on my screen, there's a, a red box kind of hanging out here in the middle of nowhere. And this is actually a hidden field. And I'm not getting a, I have a pop-up, so I'm not getting the little help text. But the, it's a hidden field. So the user doesn't actually see that. But it's available to me to uh, perform business logic on or around, as well as output that information. So I have this rule here uh, called uh, flag for callback. And this is something I don't want to show on my form. Maybe this is a, a you know account opening form here. But if, in this case, the net worth of the person that's filling out this form is greater than a million dollars, um, I, I want to do something special in my back end system. Like I, I may want to have uh, an, a loan officer, an account rep, call that person back, give them a personal phone call because they're you know a high a high uh, high value customer. Now. I can easily modify this if-then uh, validation rule. I can add another uh, clause to this. So 
if the net worth is greater than a million dollars, then I, I want to set this flag to true. Or maybe they, they're just not very good savers. Uh, maybe maybe they uh, maybe they make a lot of money and they just don't save it. Uh, so somewhere here is their annual income. So in addition to just being worth a, over a million dollars, I also want to flag this if uh, their annual income is greater than let's say two hundred and fifty thousand. And so if these validation rules are met, then I want to set that hidden field, flag for callback hidden, that I, that's just the name that I came up with, I want to set that to a string called true. And in this particular form, I've chosen to output that flag for callback hidden field so that it can be picked up by a downstream process. Now that could be a workflow that's configured within the eForm server so that uh, once that's submitted by the customer, uh, one of my representatives uh, that's flagged for them, and it, it's made very obvious that they need to give that person a personal phone call back. Or maybe that's just information that I pass along to my CRM system uh, to flag it in that system. Okay, so let's switch back to the PowerPoint here. So to wrap up, um, I, I, hope you've, I hope you've seen a little bit about how iLinks eForms can, can solve some real problems and eliminate problems that are caused by paper and, and drive some efficiencies by eliminating the paper and converting those into electronic processes. So saving time, you're, you're not rekeying information from a paper form into a back office system. You can capture that information electronically and deliver it immediately. You can improve your data quality uh, by enforcing uh, validation rules and lookup uh, options at collection time. Um, you can reduce costs by eliminating paper creation, moving, and storage. Um, you can uh, leverage these time savings uh, and allow employees to focus on more engaging, more profitable work. Uh, you can access this form data immediately after it's submitted, as opposed to waiting for paper information uh, to be rekeyed into your backend systems. You can use eForms to report and to analyze on trends and analyze your, your, your flow of information into your organization. And you can, you can go green by eliminating the paper altogether. So we've discussed how eForms can deliver some productivity gains, some cost reductions all by itself. But I wanted to take a minute and talk a little bit about the rest of the iLink suite. Uh, it contains some products that can further enhance and extend these benefits uh, throughout your enterprise and even the systems that you already own. So iLink's Capture, this is a production level capture product uh, that meets even the most demanding capture volumes. It includes a very powerful workflow capability to allow you to further streamline your business processes. And it can be used in conjunction with eForms as an additional content onboarding solution. iLink's Content Store is a very easy to use, powerful web-based content repository. It's perfect for managing completed eForms. And by the way, uh, iLink's Capture and iLink's Content Store will be featured on upcoming webinars, so keep an eye out for those announcements. With iLinks Integrate, you can deliver and consume both content and data between any two applications with zero coding. So this allows you to con deliver contextually relevant eForm data right to users without them having to leave their line of business user interface. iLinks Import automates the consumption of content from a large variety of sources and delivers that content to iLinks Capture or even a third-party capture system. And iLinks Release accepts content from multiple uh, uh, number of capture systems like iLinx Capture and delivers that content to iLinx Content Store or even uh, a third-party content management system. Now, Image Source has been implementing enterprise content management solutions for 20 years across the world to hundreds of customers. And these solutions include uh, not just the iLinks technologies and products, but also Oracle and IBM FileNet and COFAX and other technologies. Using our unique ECM ecosystem methodology, we can help you craft uh, the optimal content management strategy for your organization. 
And this methodology starts uh, starts with uh, in-depth interviews uh, with both your lines of businesses and your IT groups. And then next, we go through a comprehensive analysis to identify lines of businesses that are underserved by your existing ECM capabilities. Thirdly, we work with you to craft the perfect content management strategy for your organization. And lastly, we can co-present that final presentation with you uh, uh, to your management. So whether you're on uh, an end-of-life version of Oracle IPM or just getting started with enterprise content management, this proven methodology can help you define a realistic strategy to drive significant process improvements throughout your organization. And improvements that will deliver measurable cost savings and competitive advantage for your business. And with that, we're done. We are, Randy. Thanks very much. I've just got just a couple of questions that came in for you. Um, so how accurate is the handwriting recognition? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, when you're talking about OCR or ICR, um, those are those become very important. And and uh, if if you noticed in the demo, I was actually kind of having a hard time writing something in there that it it, it didn't recognize. Um, and uh, what we see is about 98% uh, accuracy on the handwriting recognition. And it differs a little bit between uh, alpha characters and numeric characters, but it's very good. And and we really feel like it's it's the best in the industry for electronic forms and handwriting recognition. Okay, and then um, the next one was, what browsers support iLinks eForms? Yeah, uh, actually, almost all of them. So it's it's IE, it's Safari, it's Firefox, and Chrome. And then I've got one more, and this one says, do the business rules only get applied when you're connected to the server? Oh, yeah, good question. And the answer is no. Um, your business rules are actually baked into your form. Um, and as I mentioned and I, I demoed, uh, you've got a couple of layers of sophistication when defining your, your business rules and your validation. We went through a simple example, point and click through some validation rules. Those are available whether you're online or offline. You can also drop, in, drop down into the eForm scripting environment. And this is where you know, you're going to have to have some developer uh, skills to create uh, this scripting business logic, uh, but you can get to any level of sophistication you want. And that scripting and that, that business logic and validation is available whether you're connected uh, to, your, to a network or not. Now, if you're utilizing resources that are on your network, such as a, a web services or a, a line of business system database, then you'll need to be connected. But as I mentioned, if it's a small enough data set, you can actually export that from your from your line of business into a, a small standalone database such as Access and embed that information directly into your form so that it is available actually offline. 